So I wanted to talk about LogSeq task management, but to show a full example, I need to take you on a trip. So the trick with task management is that it's not about writing things down, but it's about getting results when you need it. Nani? And for that, you need to, you know, write down your tasks and label them in some way. So one of the quick and easy tips that I have, and that's for physical space, is I have a label called errands and I have a label called Praxis. And Praxis is like a do-it-yourself store in the Netherlands where I'm heading right now. And then the goal of that is that once I'm out, I just go to Loxy, I go to errand and it shows me by base of query everything that I need to get when I'm out and about meaning that I can group tasks and I can forget about them until the moment I'm actually on my way in this example I'm using a location like the boxes but of course this assigns to all other tasks that you have. So they can be assigned to projects, people, other things. Uh, and we're gonna talk about all of them, but first I need to head back to the studio with one small stop in between, and that's getting lunch. Get the goods. Let's start with the basics for LogSeq task management. The first thing that you need to get is that LogSeq has a task workflow. For example, it has later, now, and to do, doing. And the meaning of that is that, for example, later and to do are both methods to assign. This is something that you have planned. And now and doing is you're currently in the process of doing this. One of the neat features is that if you put something on doing, LogSeq can even do some time tracking for you, telling you how long you took with a task. By default, it is later now, and I always switch it to to do doing because that's more natural to my flow. Now, the way that you move through these settings is by pressing Control and Enter, which moves to the next set. So if you're using to do doing, it will go from to do to doing to done. And if you use the later now, it will go from later now to done. Both cases end with it being done and marked as such. There are some other options that don't come up in this cycle. For example, you can do slash waiting to announce that this particular task is in waiting mode. And I love using that when it's linked to a person and I'm waiting on their response, meaning that if I see them, I know I have something that I'm waiting for and I can ask them about. Then finally, uh, this mystified me a bit in the beginning, was the priority. So you can do slash A, slash B, or slash C to give a task a priority. In effect, it feels a bit like adding a tag to it, but it's just easier to do. And I mostly use these to get some things on top. So if I have like a task and I go, that this is really important using the Eisenhower matrix. So like needs to be done now and it's important goes to A and it's important but it doesn't have to happen right now it goes to b and then finally c is for things that aren't as important but have to be done now those things will come to the top of my planning list and help me during my daily routine of building tasks okay and then you have the slash schedule option and what that does it allows you to mark a task for somewhere in the future and then that day will show up on your to do or overdo list if you're a day late and you can also make it repeating, which means that LogSeq takes care of the work when you mark it off. So some things I wanna do like every three days, so I make it repeating for three days, and then if I check them off, then the date when it's scheduled moves up three days. It doesn't finish the task, so make sure to put it somewhere where you don't mind it constantly being in a non-checked mode. Now, if you're making tasks, you might be wondering, can I use links or tags? And I already put like a long video, which I'll put a card up here, but in the general rule, I use links when referring to projects or people, and I use tags for some of the more commonly used things like my errands, which I just displayed when I was driving around. Now, having your queries is one thing, but you need to be able to find them back to make any use of them. And with LogSeq, you do that by using queries. There's a couple of basic queries 
The first one would be now, and that just shows you anything that's on either doing or now, and you're actively working on. They come like on the top on the, your daily journal and are easy to reference. Like this is what I'm currently working on. Then another one is next, which looks into the next seven days for any scheduled tasks that you have upcoming. And then finally you have overdue, which is anything that was scheduled in the past and that you need to look at. I don't use these very often because I make a day plan. So what I have is like a bunch of queries on like a separate page that I can browse through, which I'll talk about later. Now let's talk the most basic of basic query and that is the task and then either to do or doing. You can also add done to this, but then you just get all your tasks. And even without anything else, this usually gets huge because if you get all the tasks that are in your log seek graph, then it's gonna get busy. You know, if you're using it any amount of, of real estate, it just starts filling out. So you need an extra filter. And the first extra filter that I would use is priority. So filter out from the things that you thought were most important to the ones that you think were least important so that top and center are the things that are important to you. And to do so, you need to modify the query a bit. Now, if you've watched my videos on Logseq queries, you know that Clojure always works with like a function and then a couple of variables. So to do so, we need to combine two things. I need to combine the task to do doing with priority and then A, B, C or A, B, depending on like how you use your setup. In my setup, I just use A. And then to make sure that both are in effect and I get that subsection, I use and. So the total query becomes and, open bracket for task to do doing, closing, opening again for priority A. And that generates like a simple query that says, if it is a task that I still need to do and it's priority A, get it to the top. This is the most important query for me and that is to combine to do doing with a page or link or reference. So I make like another query, I say and, I say task to do or doing, and then I put like a page link behind that. And that's because the page can be anything and that makes super useful subsets. So when I put like a person in there, when I talk to the person, I know these tasks for this person are outstanding. If I'm at a location, like in the case for errand or praxis that I showed on the start of the video, I know this is what I need to do in this location. But it can also link to projects or a book you're reading, anything that you want to be like subfilled. It's like these things I need to do for this specific subset. And because they're tags, you can also link them to multiple things. So you might have like a link going to reading and one to a specific book. And then, you know, overall, I need to do this. And per book, I need to do this. So this query, if there's only one query you take from this video is the main one. And I'll be sure to mention that in the description down below so you can use it everywhere. So now I get to my daily workflow and I start with a few elements and I try to keep it as minimalistic as possible. So I have like thoughts, which I write down my morning thoughts. Then I have task list, which is what I'll talk about in depth. And then the rest of the day is just timestamps with interstitial journaling and whatever is happening at that point in time. Now this task list is for my brain because I tried queries, but then the list just becomes too long. And I like having like a set focus points for that day, uh, very much reminding me of the bento method if you ever watched Keep Productive videos. And this works particularly well because I add like tasks to this and then I shift click on the bullet point in front of it because that will move it to the top on the right panel. And then I can work from there, seeing what I have open and just work top to bottom on my task. Now to add tasks, I have two options. One is that I'll just write it in between my daily journaling. So if I'm having like a meeting and I'm already like in a subset, I'll just make the tasks there and link them to whatever they're related to. And then the other option I have is to actually add it to my daily task list. And that is a bit of friction because I have to scroll up and down for the list and add it there. And that is on purpose because I already made a day plan. I already said this is what I can probably do today. So anything I add there is taking away from my official plan. So I want a bit of friction there. If not, it just goes in the list and it will probably get picked up the next day when I make the plan for that day. Staying consistent is important to me. So now I have my daily list and I have the things that happen throughout the day. And then the start of my day, when I need to fill this daily list, I have a separate page called task list. And that has just a bunch of queries on it that I peruse in the morning in its order. 
to figure out what has the priority for that day. And in my case, I have a priority A, priority B, priority C top list. So those shows all the tasks that I marked as, hey, this is something I really need to pay attention to. Then I have anything that's overdue or important. And then finally, just all the other to do's that I have in time order. So I can just go back in time to figure out what I need to do. Uh, it's a bit bad because all tasks might drop off at the end, but in practice, like if I didn't have to pay attention to it for two months, I probably won't have to pay attention to it now. And there's things that are currently happening that are more pressing. And then to make the list, and this is another great feature I love from Logseek, if I control C in one of these lines, it doesn't copy the line, it copies a reference to that line. So putting that reference in my task list means that I see the task and I know where it's referencing to, so I can click on it and then go to that spot in my graph where all the neat details like the complete meeting, for example, that was around it are there and I can find everything I need. But also if I mark it as done, it gets marked done everywhere because all the places where I copied it, if I had it on a couple of days, for example, I had it yesterday and today because it didn't get to it, they all get marked because they all point to the same point and time. And this really helped me to make like a simple daily list that I can go through with Logseek that drags everything in that's related. And then of course I have the other subset and that is anything that has people marked in it that shows up when I need it. So when I'm talking to person A, I can go to their page and see the tasks that were related to that person. And they might not be relevant now, but it's a lot easier if you just have like five tasks open to just skim it and go like, okay, this is what I'm waiting for and I can't help yet. But this I still need to ask and then be direct and ask the questions that are outstanding. And globally that gets me through most of my task list issues on a day-to-day -day basis for that current project I'm in. So in global, that's how I use Logseek task management, how you might be able to use it. There are different work methods. Some people prefer putting stuff on project pages or like related to each other. And that works, but just not for me. Other people love working from queries. There's an excellent plugin, for example, that shows your to-do list on the top, but I noticed that I was just filling too much with the query and getting my to-dos organized instead of just doing them, which picking to do's in the morning is a five minute job and like this, this, this is important. And then I just get going to it. I need little distractions. Find your own method though. Remember you're awesome. Keep it up.